Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the Microsoft Surface Pro 4, starting at $899 and going up depending on the configuration that you choose. And one of the biggest differences, by the way, in the Surface Pro 4 lineup as opposed to previous generations is that we do now have the ability to customize the configuration. So if you want 16 gigs of RAM, 1 terabyte of storage, you can actually go that far. So the sky is the limit, quite literally, when it comes to pricing. In my opinion, the best value overall, if you're looking for a powerful machine without breaking the bank, is the one I'm about to unbox here. At $1299, this is the i5 Skylake 6th Gen Intel processor. That is a ULV processor uh, with 256 gigs of storage and 8 gigs of RAM. No dedicated GPU like the Surface Book if you go for that option, and no included keyboard. Of, co of course, Windows 10 Pro out of the box. Let me go ahead and crack this open. Uh, other changes you should be aware of because this does look a lot like the third generation Surface Pro, but the screen has gotten slightly larger. We've gone from 12 inches to 12.3. We've also gotten a bump up in resolution. That's another improvement. Uh, and we've gotten a revamp of the pen. We now have 1,024 levels of sensitivity, something that I think a lot of people wished uh, the previous generation had. And again, that's really what uh, Microsoft continues to do well, which is respond to customer feedback and try to make a product that ultimately is the best that they can. Uh, so things have also gotten a little bit slimmer. I didn't mention that. Uh, we have a front-facing camera right here, uh, the ability, of course, to recognize your retina. You can see the uh, smiley face right there, part of the Windows 10 Pro experience. Uh, volume rocker up at the top. In fact, let me get the plastic off of here, but it's just displaying everything. Uh, they've also done away with the Windows button, uh, but quite frankly, I think that is a good thing. So off comes the plastic, and here you have the tablet. So really, it does look a lot like the Surface Pro 3. Again, a little bit slimmer, a little more powerful. Uh, on the right-hand side of the device, you can see we've got our display port. Uh, USB 3.0 port and charging port, micro SD card slot right there under the uh, kickstand, which is basically identical, it is not basically, uh, to the previous generation, which is a good thing. Uh, and then uh, we also have now, of course, uh, much like the previous gen, uh, a port down here in terms of for using access accessories like the uh, type cover. And on the left-hand side, we have our uh, headphone and microphone jack right there. Uh, at the top. Uh, at the top of the actual device, power button and volume rocker, and we have both a front-facing and rear camera, which have also been improved on both ends. So high expectations for this tablet, no question about it. Front-facing speakers right here. I'm going to see if it powers on. Let's take a look. And there we have it. And you know, ultimately, battery life has not improved. It's being quoted as up to nine hours, so that's essentially the same as the previous generation. And this is going to lead a lot of users to be uh, more interested in the more value-oriented uh, Surface Pro 3, although Microsoft is claiming that the Surface Pro 4 has up to 30% more performance capability with that 6th Gen Skylake uh, Intel CPU. You can see the pen right here, new. Uh, we have now a rubber eraser tip on the back, or at least textured uh, tip, I should say, and they've redesigned this, uh, squared it off, made it feel more like a pencil. You now have the ability to actually change the tips, which for an artist or anyone who really wants precise control when using pen input is critical. So again, heightened awareness for the segment they're actually trying to sell to, which quite frankly should be the goal from the start. Uh, on the right side here, beyond paperwork, we have our power brick, which should look familiar, and that's because it's the exact same one uh, that we had last generation. We still have a USB port on it for charging additional uh, USB-driven devices, and that pretty much sums things up. I mean, the Surface Pro 4 is really all about, as I mentioned, Microsoft just taking something that is successful and uh, definitely capitalizing on it and making sure that customers get exactly what they're looking for out of uh, their brand new product. So I like what I see here. I like what I saw in the uh, introduction of the product when I had my first hands on with it. 
Um, and really, it comes down to, uh, do you need the new things that Skylake and the Surface Pro 4 bring to the table as opposed to the third generation, which definitely could fool you at first glance. I even showed that in my quick look at the Surface Pro 4, that it was difficult to differentiate between the two because the form factor is exactly the same, uh, a little under two pounds. And then you have the ability, of course, as I've mentioned, to throw on a type cover, uh, this is compatible with all third gen uh, accessories. So whether we're talking about the dock, uh, type cover, you can use those in order to power uh, charge as well as type on this device. So backwards compatibility. The same goes for the new type cover. It's also uh, compatible with third gen. So Microsoft doing right by their customers, rewarding them for staying loyal essentially and recognizing that no one else has really made a product quite like this. So a lot to like here. Of course, I need to spend some time with it before I can give you full impressions. There's the cue to actually set the pen up, but I will report back. You all know that. I always do. Uh, any questions or comments about this, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.